Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and double honors unto the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and honors unto you brothers out there in the highways and the byways teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And I want to do a lesson on um, the gift, because there are many gifts. We know of the special gift of faith. All right. We know of the gift of repentance, which is given unto us through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. But there's also the gift of rebuke, which is all connected. The, the, the gift of rebuke, the gift of re, re, uh, reproof, the gift of correction, the gift of criticism in righteousness. Okay. And um, so I just want to go in on that topic and it's a great mercy that the Lord have shewed us our transgression because there's no way you're going to repent if you don't know what you're repenting about or for. You cannot repent in ignorance, man. You have to be enlightened to your transgression in order for you to repent. All right. And, um, you know, what you'll find out is um, some people receive criticism or rebuke or reproof and and they receive it unto life and some people reject it unto death because rebuke reproof and correction is 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 a hard thing to take when you when you have pride because everybody you know in the flesh wants to be spoken well of at all times they want to always be right and you want to be spoken well of but guess what sometimes you're not right and sometimes you do things which you're not going to be spoken well of but a lot of people would rather be lied to. They would rather, you know, be have smooth things spoken of them for the sake of the flesh. All right. And that's the kind of people that's going to be destroyed. You know, that's why when we come out there and we, we um, rebuke the people, the scripture says they abhor him which rebuketh in the gate. Because they, they, they only want to be told smooth things. They only want to be flattered. Okay. You know, they want yes men around them, as the saying goes. But that will lead to your destruction. Especially if you error in your way. You need to be told. So you can correct it. Now, this is Job 31. This is a heavy um, chapter. Because Job basically, Job was in the spirit of, of look man, if I do wrong, then I des I de of course I deserve the judgment. You know, it's just, it's plain and simple, man. And we've all done wrong, so we deserve judgment. You know, anyone that's in the spirit of you don't deserve what it is that you're going through, that's the, that's the spirit of being offended. And guess what? You're going to be destroyed. You know, you have to understand that the, the, the things we go through in our lives, man, we deserve it down to the last, you know, down to the last instant. It's all deserved. We deserve more than what we get. The Lord is merciful. All right. So Job 31, Job pretty much goes into that. You know, if he, you know, it, it, I'll read a little bit here. Job 31 and um, 1 and I'll read down to like 6 or 7. It says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity or if my foot have hasted to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. If my step have turned out of the way and mine heart walked after mine eyes, and if any blot have cleaved to mine hands, and that's that covetous fleshly nature then let me sow and let another eat yea let my offspring be rooted out if mine heart have been deceived by a woman or if i have laid wait at my neighbor's door then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down upon her for this is an heinous crime yea is an iniquity to be punished by the judges for it is a fire that consumeth to destruction and would root out all mine increase 
So he's basically saying, look, if I've done iniquity, then yeah, let the judgment be upon me. All right. But Job didn't know what iniquity he had done. So he wanted to know from the most high so he could correct his path. All right. And you could read down. We can, you know, read down and, you know, he goes into a lot. Like if I despise the cause of my manservant or my maidservant when they contended with me, basically you become an oppressor. You know, where, you know, you, you know, then, you know, so he goes into different things. Now, if we jump down to 30, what is it, 35, this is what Job said. He said, oh, that one would hear me. Now, the one he's speaking about is the Most High. Because Job basically wants to know from the Most High what he has done wrong to receive the judgment. Not saying he hasn't. He says he wanted to know what he did wrong. Because even Job said himself, look, if I justify myself, I would be perverse. Job just wanted to know because he was being judged and he didn't know why. He says, oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me and that my adversary had written a book. Now, the adversary and the Almighty is the same subject in this verse. When you look up the word for adversary here, it doesn't mean Satan. It's not talking about Satan. What it's talking about is someone who's charging you in according to the law, like a, uh, what, what you would call today a prosecutor. You know that when you go into a courtroom, the prosecutor outlines the charges which are against you. Well, that's what the Most High does. Go down here. To the word adversary it means strife, controversy. And the Most High has a controversy with us, man. He has a controversy with the with the nation of Israel. All right, dispute, strife, quarrel, dispute, controversy, case at law. Yeah, the Most High has a case against us, man. All right. Now, Job didn't know what that case was, so he said, "Look, man." That the Almighty would answer me and that my adversary had written a book. Now the beautiful thing is that the Lord, even though we've been judged and we're under the curses, and for the longest time we didn't understand, you know, why is our lives are the way it was. The Lord has blessed us in these last days to consider our ways, man. Because he set up the, the prophets. To, to rebuke. Alright. Isaiah 58 and 1. It says. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And shew my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob their sins. So the Lord has raised up prophets in these last days. To rebuke the people. Alright. To reprove the people. Alright. To rebuke. To reprove the people all right and that's a good thing because what you don't want is to be in in the way of error and not to be corrected because all you're going to receive then is nothing but judgment you're not even going to get a chance to repent or to correct your way and that error that you're in will lead to your ultimate destruction man all right second timothy's Two, sorry, Second Timothy four and two, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now it says reprove and rebuke, and that's part of the mercy. You know, you 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 go out there and people are ignorant to their to their own wickedness. We were all ignorant to our own wickedness. It wasn't until the Lord uh, um, shined his light that we we became uh, uh, knowledgeable to, to our sins. And then so now we, we can now address those sins. Now, if you don't know, then you're going to continue in sin and get guess what? You're going to be destroyed. All right. Now, this is the word rebuke. It means to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior and actions. All right. So a big part of this truth, the gospel, because you ain't going to repent unless you get told what it is you need to repent for. 
And a lot of people, man, especially these Israelite women, man, the so-called black women, don't like to be criticized. They don't like to be rebuked. It's, it's, they, they don't mind other people getting criticized and rebuked. And when it's time to criticize and rebuke other people, but when the light is being shunned on themselves, then it becomes a problem. Then it's like, well, what about you? You know, that, that kind of spirit, <laughs> you know? And you know, we face it all the time, man. That's, that's two thirds of our people really in general, male and female. They don't like to take rebuke. And those are the ones that are going to be destroyed because they don't want to act, they don't want to take the, 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 the harsh truth. And the hardest truth to accept is the truth about yourself, especially, especially when it's something that you don't want to hear, when it's something negative. That paints you in a bad light. Nobody wants to hear that. Everyone wants to be praised and flattered. Okay, let's get the word reproof. Reprove. It means to criticize or correct. All right, so you got rebuke, which is a harsh criticism, and reprove, which is a more gentle criticism. All right, but it's all rebuke and reprove for for the purposes of correction, that you may be peradventure, that you may repent. And that's, that's so part of this gospel is to rebuke, to criticize, to put down <laughs> in order, in order for you to be, to, 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 to be brought up, you first need to be put down because right now you're up in wickedness. So you need to be put down so you may rise in righteousness. You need to be broken down and then built back up, edified in, in, in righteousness. All right. Let's get a scripture, man. Oh, the Yashawamba showed me. Psalms 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. Um, nah, this is not the one. Yeah, so lucky I was getting two scriptures mixed up again. Yeah, this is the one that um, the Elder Yeshua showed me. The Psalms 141 and 5 it says, Let the righteous smite me. Yeah, because, um, you know, when, when the prophets are out there sometimes, the rebuke going to come harsh, man. It's going to come like a personal attack, which it is. It's an attack on your wickedness. All right. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness because at the end of the day, you being rebuked, you now you know um, what you're doing wrong and what the judgment of that will be if you continue through the fear of the Lord. Then you you should seek like how do you escape that? You know how do you repent? How do you seek mercy rather than being emotional and getting hurt and trying to get defensive? If you really feared and understood, then you'd be like, wow, man, you know, I need to consider my ways, man. It says, and let him reprove me, which we already showed you what the word reprove is. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. Because ultimately it is for the better. It's like, it's like when you get one of them hard, deep massages, man, bust you up, you're in pain. But ultimately it works out for the better. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Okay. Let's point on that. All right. So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, we have to thank Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man, that he he um allowed us to um have the understanding of the laws. And that understanding of right from wrong, which is all in Yahweh Shai, the balance. And that we can now use that knowledge, wisdom, understanding to correct our way, man. And to understand our own way and to understand our condition and to begin to, to correct, man. Alright, and, and offend less. 
because if you didn't know man you'd be going off mad crazy and you already know that the missiles will be waiting for you all right anyway so that's the point on that man um rebuke is a beautiful thing you know and um if we didn't have it then we'd all be finished we'd all be through all right so with that i'm gonna say shalom